Welcome once again to Power of the Internet, an hour-long show where I talk about just, well, everything. Since I talk about such a wide variety of topics, don't forget there are chapters down below. Use those to jump to the part that you'd be most interested in. And personally, I suggest you listen to this show like you do so many other podcasts while taking a walk or sorting your magic cards or playing a video game. Just relax and then listen. It's been about three months since the Mike Klum documentary, and I just thought I would talk about this today. I got a lot to say about it, and eventually we'll make its own, like, video uh, dedicated, you know, more succinct with editing and stuff like that. But I just wanted to gather my thoughts here today in this podcast, so, uh, you know, I'd let you join me in that process. So, I guess the question a lot of people have asked me is, are you happy you made the documentary with Mike Klum? And the answer is yes, mostly yes. In the short term, it brought in a tremendous number of people a lot of which did not stick around because, you know, my content isn't that great. Uh, but, but a lot of you did. And God bless you. Thank you for sticking around. I really appreciate you, right? Secondly, um, it, the attention was there. I, I felt like it was good to get the message out. And the people who hate me, yeah, let them confirm that they have reasons to hate me. Let me admit to the things I've done, like wasting my money on crypto or traveling and all this other stuff and women, and and uh, to confirm how actually sick I am, because I think it's important for people to understand, and for them to th th take a good look at my relationship with my girlfriend, and, and if they make their judgments on that. And it felt good to admit the fact that, hey, yeah, I'm a creep. I'm a bit of a creep. I've always been a bit of a creep. Am I harmful to people? No. Have I ever harmed anybody else? No. Do I have the inclination to harm other people? No. Uh, but I am a weirdo. And I've always been a weirdo, and I don't mind confirming that I'm a weirdo. That's fine. The downside of this thing is I wish we'd been a little more accurate with the numbers. You know, I wish we'd made it more clear that the mock interview was a mock interview and not an actual interview. There, It mostly just came down to the editing and I, not, not really being able to predict how the Internet's going to take certain things. And what the internet's going to take from something. Now look, I've been at this job on YouTube for 17 years, 16 years. I've been making online content since 1998. And you would think that I'd have a pretty good idea of how people are going to take things. And I have learned there's one rule. They will always take it the worst possible way. Whatever it is you're doing, Mr. Beast cures blindness. Well, he's only doing it for this terrible reason, right? So I knew that going into this. But it's so funny to see what people decided to zero in on, on uh, zero in on and focus on and determine that this was that and this was this and it's also funny to see them like exaggerate things or take things out of context or just reject reality and substitute their own but that's not Mike's fault that's not this documentary's fault that's not my fault that's just how a lot of people consume their media consume their lives consume their whatever so I, I guess that's always going to be part of it. I am glad I worked with Mike, honestly, and I'm glad that we put this thing out there. And it'll haunt me till the day that I'm dead, but that's the reality of it. That's the internet. Uh, all of these things were going to haunt me anyway, right? All of these rumors, all of these whatever. So put it out there. Admit to having wasted my money. Admit to being a, a creep who wants to date a woman in her 20s. Uh, admit to just being a weirdo. And I, I'm glad I did it. I'm really glad I did it. A lot of people have asked me, should they work with Mike if Mike comes to them and asks them to? And I guess my advice to you would be yes, Dark Side Phil, yes, whoever else. But just know what you're creating when you go into it, number one. Uh, watch what you're creating. Focus on what you're creating. Um, work with Mike on creating it. Make sure you guys have a shared vision. Me and Mike did. And make sure that you do what what you like to do, right? Uh, and, and make sure that it's it's something that you feel you can stand by once the internet gets a hold of it. Because if Mike makes something, it's definitely going to get seen. I genuinely believe anything Mike does, he's very good at what he does, and it's going to get a tremendous amount of attention. Um, make sure you can handle that. And make sure that you can handle the fact that people are going to pick it apart Focus on the tiniest details. Um, substitute their own reality from actual reality sometimes. And just go go crazy with it. Go crazy with it. But three months on the other side of this thing, 
ultimately it might have had a negative impact uh, and time will tell but in the short term it was a very positive impact we'll see three months from now six months from now we'll see what we find out there but as it is right now i feel like it was a mostly positive impact and i'm really glad i did it for those of you who watched it i hope you enjoyed it for those of you who chose not to watch it i respect and understand that too it did come across as a bit of a hit piece right but i mean you got to respect i <laughs> i was in creative control in a lot of ways for most of that hit piece so uh i uh it's kind of like falling on your own sword but i again i my goal here was to fall on that sword and then hopefully rebuild afterwards and the rebuild is going well. I'm happy I did it. I did want to give a shout out to my girlfriend uh, who got me this Valentine's gift that you can see on screen right now. It is the nicest Valentine's gift I have ever gotten. And, and let me start by saying that Valentine's Day is kind of a bullshit holiday, right? Uh, I've always, I'm sentimental. So I've always treated it like a big deal. When I was single, I was miserable. And I was with somebody, I wanted it to be really good. This year it was really good. This is the best Valentine's Day I think I've ever had. And what you're looking at is a hand-drawn, she's quite the artist, I can't believe how good she is, but it's a hand-drawn uh, drawing of my dog, Sammy, holding one of the roses from the batch of roses that I got her the day that she moved in. Obviously, Sammy wasn't chewing on a rose in real life, but that's what she pictured, obviously. And the cinnamon at the bottom is so sweet as well. And it's just... This was the day that my two worlds merged. My world with Sammy and my home life without her merged with my life with her. And she couldn't have got it more perfect. And uh, I just, I'm so grateful to be able to hang this on a wall and look at it. And um, it is a really nice symbol of this very nice relationship that I have. And I tried to do my best to like spoil her as well. Like I took her out to sushi lunch and I, I, I had a budget this year, but I still bought her a, a tiny teddy bear holding the heart. And I got her, you know, a, like a hammock for her Pokemon stuffed animals to hang in our room. And I got her um, a chocolate and a small necklace and, and things along that lines. You know, it's her first Valentine's Day with me. So I wanted to go as hard as I could, considering that I'm still on a budget. Right. But I think I I think I did pretty good. And I, I can't believe how well she did. And I genuinely feel like I don't deserve her. But I'm going to continue to try to earn it as best I can. Uh, but I'm so grateful for it. It's such a wonderful, nice thing. And I love being happy, and she loves being happy, and we love our family, and we love... It's so weird what the internet has made out of this relationship. Like, a, a lot of you guys obviously have our back, and you guys are awesome, but so many people are, like, so negative about it for various reasons, you know, the age difference, or just they don't want to see me happy, or they think I'm a creep, or, or whatever. And I get that. I respect that. I understand where you're all coming from, but it's not reality. The reality of it is we're just two happy people doing happy things. And it's nice being happy. It's nice to have that nice thing. It makes it so much easier to get through the bullshit. It really does. And uh, I, I, whatever bullshit that I have to get through, uh, as long as I get to come home to her every day, that's all that really matters, I think. Uh, if someone, If you can make somebody that happy and that person also makes you happy, then I think... I think you're winning at life, man, and I'm glad to be a winner. All right, before I start this segment, let me go ahead and say, if you're not a channel member and you like this show, please consider clicking that channel member button because uh, this is absolutely going to get demonetized. <laughs> and if it doesn't get fully demonetized, you still see ads. It's probably the lowest possible bids that there can be. But we need to talk about a content creator by the name of Vosh, and I want to offer some personal opinions that I didn't get a chance to put on my podcast episode about this over there on the Low Cow podcast. So there's a creator by the name of Osh, and uh, I'm certain you are slightly aware of him. You know, he's a, a leftist political content creator. And yeah, I follow him, and I still follow him, and he follows me. And I'll probably continue to follow him, even if he unfollows me, because uh, I like to follow people that I don't necessarily agree with or even like so that I can learn and see what they're doing and what their lives are like and what they're saying, okay? But <clears throat> I don't always agree with uh, Vosh's political takes. In fact, I think most extremists are crazy people. If you're extremely on the right or you're extremely on the left, then I think you are probably nutso. Don't be an extremist in anything, especially politics. It's pretty nonsensical, in my opinion. 
But Vosh has come under fire for a couple of different reasons. And uh, the first of which is he has admitted to wanting to be a horse while having relations with a human woman. Well, you know, I'm pretty vanilla. Um, yeah, I do like women in their 20s, uh, but I think that's pretty vanilla. And when it comes to the things I like to do in the bedroom, it's pretty boring. I'm pretty vanilla. Uh, I like to be pleased and to please other people, and that's pretty much about it. That's the limit to, that I go to. I, I might be a product of my generation or something along the lines, but that's just maybe I won the genetic lottery in that one minor way. <laughs> that I am wired in a very vanilla, boring way. But I cannot put myself into the headspace of wanting to be a horse and wanting to, to, to be with a woman while being a horse, especially because that, to me, seems like an act of violence. Um, it seems like you're wanting to hurt another person because that would not be pleasant for the woman. I don't think that's part of the fantasy for him. At least I hope it's not. But that just, it seems like it would have to be by definition. And don't get me wrong. Like if you're into BDSM and you're into that kind of thing and I, you know, I'm not here to yuck your yum. I'm not really going to judge you for that. If you want to get tied up and tickled or whatever, I don't, you know, do it, go for it, have fun with it. Uh, but I just, I can't put myself into that headspace. I don't understand it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess it takes all types. And if you're not actually hurting a person, if you're not actually harming a person, hey, I guess that's good, right? But this also led to the fact that um, he made some statements defending possession of certain, I don't know, let's call it art for the purposes of YouTube monetization, uh, photographs of... Well, people not ready to consent uh, for those photographs, <laughs> mostly because they are very young. You know what I'm talking about. And some of the clips that I saw on the podcast, he said, at least it seems like he was saying that if you didn't pay for that kind of entertainment or content, then you're not being harmful to, to kids. And I just... You know, I know I'm supposed to be angry and uh, upset about this, and I am, but I can't really express it because I'm just so tired, man. As someone who had that kind of thing happen to me when I was a kid, it, it ruined my life, man. And uh, I see these people wanting to ruin the lives of other kids. And taking those types of photos and putting it, uh, that does ruin a, a kid's life. And if, just sharing them, if, they, if you're in possession of them, the, the way that you're in possession of them is because someone had that happen to them, man. And it's just so... The world is sick. The world is just sick. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. The world is sick. I used to live in a world where I thought, hey, this only happened to me, not everyone else. And now I'm finding out how just how many kids it happens to. And it's heartbreaking. And what do you do about it? What do you what do you change about it? How do you I don't I just don't I just uh, tired of the world, man. I'm tired of being in it. It's hard to be angry anymore. I'm old and I'm tired. And I'm just sick of it. The other thing that I was on the podcast on the podcast is there was apparently a folder um on Vosh's hard drive that was, I don't know what to call it to keep it from getting demonetized, but drawings of those types of things we mentioned earlier. And I have a take about those types of drawings. I get that they are legal, but I think that if you're looking at drawings of that, of kids for that type of purposes, because it, it makes you feel a certain way, then you're a sick person. Uh, that's just it. That's my opinion. I, I, that's my gut feeling. A lot of people, I mentioned this gut feeling on Twitter, and I had all these anime profile photos come and tell me how I'm wrong and how just because they get get their kicks by looking at that type of thing doesn't mean they'd ever actually harm a child or harm a person or whatever. And good. Okay, great. You're not harming children, man. But I still, it just, it, it, I, I think you're a sick person. I think you need help if you are 
turned on by that type of thing. And I don't think you need to be with it. I hope anybody watching that who, who watches this, who is that type of person, I hope you can understand my concern. Number one, it happened to me. And because it happened to me, I'm very hyper aware that it can happen to other people. And I want to be hyper vigilant about that. And I definitely want to make sure that if you're looking at if drawn pictures of kids, AI generated pictures of kids, whatever pictures of kids, if you are getting your kicks from that, it makes me very, very concerned that you are going to ruin a life the way mine was ruined. And I don't think I'm alone in that fear or that concern. I don't, I don't know what to do in this world anymore. I don't. And I'm probably not sitting in a place where I can even judge another person at all. Um, because of the dumb jokes I've made and the stupid things I've said and, 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 and then the, the, the way people have taken those things and twisted them and turning them into something entirely different. So I, I'm probably not in a position where I can judge Vosh at all. But I'm going to... Because I can't help myself because, again, it ruined my fucking life. And to think that a content creator that I've listened to a little bit and watched and, and, and even, you know, follow on, on, to think that they'd be inclined, even remotely, to want to do that type of thing, disturbs me tremendously. Tremendously. I just don't know what the world is like anymore. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, it's heartbreaking. I don't know where to go from here. I probably should end this segment, but at the end of the day, let me speak to those anime profiles that have been lighting me up on Twitter. Uh, I hope you get help, man. And I hope what you're telling me is true. I hope you'll never actually harm a child. I guess if that's, if you have this horrible, disgusting, awful inclination. The way that you cope with it is by drawing pictures of it instead of actually harming a child. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you for not actually ruining a fucking life the way mine got ruined by it. Thank you. I wanted to talk about my other podcast, The Local Live Show, which is, you know, again, for those of you who are unfamiliar, have not listened to this, that's me. My friend uh, Tommy C., my friend Jordy, and my friend Keemstar all together. And this show is obviously very dramatic. But that's always been the design of the show, right? Takes somebody who's been involved in so much drama like me, or Jordy, or Tommy, or Keemstar, put us in the hot seat, and torture us for a couple of hours every week. That's one half of the show. That's the live shows. The other half is setting down, three friends sitting down and interviewing a guest which is also really fun. I personally like both halves. Some people only like one half. Some people only like the drama, you know, which is uh, I, to be expected. But I, I, over the last couple of weeks, we saw Jordy, my co-host, wanting to quit the show. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, this is f fake drama, forced drama, or whatever. I mean, it ends up being exaggerated for the purposes of thumbnails and stuff. But I mean, Jordy was literally miserable, I think. This, was, this show was really difficult for... Well, it's been difficult for me, if I'm being honest with you. Some of the storylines that we had to go through, um, you know, like that guy coming at my girlfriend sideways, that wasn't easy. That sucked, right? Um, having some of the guests that we've had on, not Windigoon. Windigoon was like excellent. I love having that type of guest on. But some of the other guests we've had on have just been trash human beings. And they've come on there and showed what trash they are. And it just reminds you what the universe is made up of like what people, what people can be like sometimes. And, uh, it is nice to have those people there front and center and get the clown on them and have them try to clown back and all of that stuff. It's, it's an interesting show. It's a fun show. Um, but Jordy, I think was feeling number one, he felt like the work conditions weren't great and he wasn't wrong about that. Thank you, Jordy, for taking our back in that regard. But also I think Jordy was just like getting to an emotional exhaustion point. And I think that's going to happen with somebody like Jordy or me and myself. Uh, I certainly felt the pressure of this show. I feel like he was just exhausted, man. And I won't lie. When I first started this show, I was exhausted. I, I just mentally and emotionally draining. The day before the show, I was miserable. The day of recording the show, I was miserable. I was miserable for the next two days. The day the show went live, I was miserable. When this show first started, I was just miserable all the time. 
But the show has toughened me up quite a bit. And if you go back and look at what Keemstar and Mudahar and Turkey Tom and all these other people said, they said they wanted to get on the show to try to toughen me and Jordy up as well as help us out. Certainly help us out financially. You know, uh, there is money to be made here. We are making some money doing the show, which is great. But I also feel like I'm getting a little bit tougher handling this stuff and a little bit better to throw myself into the internet arena because something has occurred to me in the last couple of years, but especially in the last couple of weeks, the current generation of people that are watching YouTube, um, not necessarily TikTok, but probably there too. But the people that are watching YouTube these days are just angry, toxic people. And, and there's a, not everybody, obviously, but there's a good amount of people 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50% that just love to hate things. They love to hate Marvel shows. They love to hate video games. They love to hate content creators. And Keemstar pointed out, if you look at the top 20, top 50 content creators, they all have huge groups of people that despise them, even including Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is out there curing blindness and deafness for people, and people are still mad at him. That's what the internet is now. If you want to have an internet presence, if you want to be online, you have to accept the fact that, number one, crazy people are going to crazy. And, and you're going to have to deal with crazy people because crazy people are allowed online, as they should be. But on top of that, normally, normal, healthy, average adults, their hobby is just to hate stuff now. That's just part of being online. And it's like I told Jordy at some point, I'm like, look, man, uh, if you want to have this job, if you want to make money, if you want to have relevancy, if you want to do this, that's the price we pay now. That is the power of the internet. See, I used the title of the, the thing. But the power of the internet is genuinely accepting that so many people out there's entire personality isn't about the things they love. I love this game. I love this show. I love this YouTuber. I love this thing. Sure, plenty of those people still exist and always will. But so much of this current generation of people that have been brought up have been designed to hate things. And the reason that is, is because social media rewards the hottest takes, the angriest takes, the meanest takes, the so also the coolest takes, right? The happiest takes, the most loving takes. But it rewards anger and frustration and, and, and hatred. It does. And the more vile a take, the more likely you are to get attention for that take. And that's what the algorithms like. The algorithms like the things that are getting paid attention to. The algorithms like it when, when things are outlandish and crazy and then it shows it to other people so that they can get a reaction. And it keeps you engaged. It keeps you watching. It keeps you doing the thing. Well, I, I'm kind of immune to that. I, I was born in 1974. I'm very, very old, right? So getting brought up in in that world, I knew that that's what the media was doing. And I, I know what it's like to not live with a computer in my hand all the time. I know what it's like to not live with a computer constantly feeding me bullshit and constantly needing attention. I still like it <laughs> quite a bit. It's still what I'm, I'm doing this show for the attention right now, right? I, you know, it's a part of the deal, but... I know what it's like to not live like that, but there's a lot of kids who have just been raised in this environment where they're constantly performing, they're performing on their social media feeds. They're, they're filming TikToks. They're, they're posting to their Instagrams. That's it. That's it. That's all they know. It's all they've ever known. And they know that the angriest takes, the hottest takes are the ones that get the most attention. And if they have any desire for attention, then they have been bred to know to be angry, angry people. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're a musician, a rock and roll star, a, 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 va a vampire, <laughs> a YouTuber, uh, a wizard. It doesn't matter. Whatever your job is, if it's going to involve an online component, you have to expect, number one, like I said, crazy people to be crazy. But number two, you're going to have to expect negative attention. It's a huge part of the job. I think Jordy's learned that in this last couple of weeks, and I really hope that he has. And it's definitely something I've learned. And I definitely learned better techniques on how to handle it. And when you're talking to somebody like Keemstar, who genuinely deals with negative attention, not just deals with it, thrives on it, seeks it, loves it, wants it, and you are getting advice from him on how to handle it, 
not to seek it out. I don't, I'm not, I don't really ever want to seek it out outside of the Locale podcast, but uh, certainly there, how to handle it, it's getting easier. Uh, it's getting a lot easier. There's going to be negative comments in, in this thing. And uh, hell, I might even like a few because it is, it is what it is. If you're doing your job well, if you're getting the attention, if people give a shit, then you're going to get that kind of negativity. And not only should you expect it, you should consider it a sign that you're doing something at least partially right. I don't know if I should be talking about this, um, especially in like a permanent way, especially in this long form content that I want to stick around forever, but I'm going to talk about it. Um, content created by the name of Too Mad, who you may or may not know. I really did not know anything about him uh, until he passed away a couple of days ago. But apparently he passed away. Uh, you know, the, we have the police documents proving it. And they're investigating it for an overdose. And it looks like the man had been struggling with uh, drugs and other issues, mental health issues, for quite some time. And I've been trying to piece this together and, and, and understand what's happened here. But a lot of people said there's basically two versions of Too Mad. Uh, I guess the name is fitting in that regard, right? There's the, the person they all knew before he got involved in, in taking drugs. And then there's the version of him after he took drugs. And that's a story as old as time. You know, my dad was an alcoholic and he was a completely different person when he was sober. Right? Uh, that's what drugs do to you. For some people, it can be a slightly better person when they're slightly inebriated. And sometimes a lot of people are mean, angry, horrible drunks and mean addicts and and they'll break laws and abuse people and do horrible things because drugs are in their system and that's why i stayed the hell away from them if i can help it you know i've, I've experimented a little bit in the last couple of years uh for medicinal purposes but i i you're never gonna see me doing it recreationally if i can help it but uh you saw this post by james ski and you can pause and read it here but basically the the they claimed that he was an R word and one of those uh, PDF files, you know, that you might have on your hard drive or whatever. Try not to get demonetized there, but I think you know what I'm talking about. But he says over the past few years, he tried to murder him multiple times for helping the police and detectives in multiple states to investigate a lot of horrible things he's done. And that's just a tiny amount of the things that people are claiming he he's done uh you got rubber ross over at game grump saying this is a lot in response to james post says this is a lot but yeah i witnessed firsthand two mads threats on james's life during twitchcon he couldn't even go home because he knew his address and was on route to vegas after the threats had to use our hotel room to hide out while waiting for law enforcement then you have other content creators showing DMs from the man. And I will warn you, as always, DMs are easily faked. So please be very careful when you're reading DMs from somebody, right? However, uh, some of these DMs are in line with what James is saying here. And, uh, you know, you never want to see anybody passing away at the age of 23. You don't want to see a YouTuber passing away at 23. Somebody that was entertaining people. And I've looked into his content, and his content was chaotic and crazy and wild. And, oh, God, I just, I, that, I like the concept of some of this. I like the idea of crazy, absurdist humor and, and bizarre stunts and all of that. But it's so frustrating because so many YouTubers I've met have been amazing people, right? I've met some of the best, you know, Markiplier and Jack Septicai and all these just perfect human beings. They were just as kind and amazing in real life as, as they were. And then, of all, of course, I've met Garbage, too. I met, you know, spoke briefly with Logan Paul, and I've met Jake Paul, and they were both garbage people, and uh, that sucks, you know. Then you got people who can be a little bit more two-faced, too, or fair-weather friends, like, uh, you know, if, if you can be on their podcast, they'll be so glad to have you, but then when your clout is gone, they have no interest in you, right? Uh, but some YouTubers are like this, man. Some YouTubers are doing this behind the scenes. And, uh, we'll get into the Vosh stuff in a minute too. And it's just, it, it, it's insane to me that people like this, the community, the people that knew him knew that this was what was going on. And what can you do to stop it? What can you do to change it? 
the police in general can't help a lot of the times, right? There's not a lot they can do. And some cops don't even care to try. Some cop organizations don't. Uh, the community itself was powerless to do anything about this. What could they do? They, they all knew it was happening. And now that the man has passed, they feel like they can safely talk about it. And time will tell if James Ski was truthful or all these other people are truthful. Or maybe it was a meme. Maybe it's all a joke and maybe I'm uh, being taken for a ride here. But if this stuff is true, I just hope that if you're out there and you're dealing with a person like this in your life, I hope you have the friends and family that can help you with it. And sometimes you are just power, powerless to handle it. I was, for the first 18 years of my life, I was powerless to get help. I was powerless to change it. I just had to survive and endure it. And if you find yourself in that powerless situation, I hope you don't give up. I hope you choose to stick it out. I hope you choose to live through it because it will eventually end. It always does. And, and you'll be on the other side of it and you'll be glad that you made it to the other side of it, right? So at the end of the day, I didn't know too mad. None of this stuff ever happened to me. I, and I have to take the word of the people that did know him that this stuff is true. And I guess it might be. Uh, just sucks that that's part of our community sometimes. You know, I know people like to LARP about me being this and being that and saying this about me and that about me. And hell, the tiniest little bit of it's true, you know. Uh, but nothing like this. I can't even fathom. And I, and honestly, other than my parents, I've never had anybody like this in my life and I can't imagine what it would be like. But if you are one of those people, stay strong, reach out for the help that you can get, whether it's just therapy once a week, at the very least have somebody to talk to and, and make sure you survive to get to the other side of it because there is another side of it and you'll be glad you made it there. I promise you. Now, because I always like to talk about at least one video game in here, the game I have chosen this time is uh, The Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. This is currently setting at about a 60 for critical reviews. The user score at about a 3.8, and it looks like it deserves that not very good score. Uh, and there's a lot of different reasons. I skipped this game for the record. Uh, did not want to waste my $80 or whatever the hell they're charging for this game. And the reason should be pretty obvious. I, I'm not a huge fan of Arkham games, but uh, they're good. You know, I'm just not crazy about them. And then when it comes to the actual, you know, gameplay of this one, it did not look good. It looked like another live service looter shooter. And then the reviews started coming out, and that turns out to be exactly what it is. But the good news is if you want to see the content of this game, well, it's all done in cutscenes because this is built to be a looter shooter. So you just watch all the cutscenes compiled on YouTube, and good news, you've effectively saved yourself $80 and still played through the game. Unless you like the looter shooter loop and want to do it with these characters, right? That, that's the, uh, the plus side to this game. But this game has fell on its face, and rightfully so, I believe. And I think a lot of this has to do with a variety of different reasons. Number one, I think there's a tremendous amount of superhero fatigue going on right now, and I understand and respect that. Uh, secondly, I think there's a tremendous amount of looter shooter fatigue, as there should be, because they're trying so much live service this, live service that, keep playing forever. But there's only so many people, it was so much time, and so much money to spend, and some of us just can't do it. We just can't do it, man. I'm sorry. We don't have the time, nor the money, nor even the inclination anymore. We're ready to do other things and live different lives than just try to live inside your uh, C class, D class <laughs> looter shooter. But I, there's a tremendous amount of animosity that came out because of this game. Uh, a lot of people who are fans of the Arkham series, uh, were just extremely upset to see their Batman treated this way. And I get that going into a game called suicide squad, kill the justice league. You should know what to expect. The suicide squad is going to kill the justice league. Right. But I, I, I was expecting a twist. I was expecting creative writing, right? They have to kill them, but they have to kill them, but it's a comic book. You can kill them and bring them back. You can kill a clone version of them. You can kill a scroll version of them. I know that's Marvel, but whatever. Why, why, why this? It's such a unceremonious killing off of their Batman and, and up. It's like they killed the company that they once were to become a company that produces subpar looter shooters. And I guess that's symbolic of it, if not exactly what they were trying to do. Fuck the symbolism. Maybe that's just what they were trying to do. 
it's it's just an example of everything that's wrong with gaming right now. And, uh, you know, I'll pick up this game when it's 20 bucks, and I'll play through it then. Or maybe it'll come to Game Pass or one of those other types of services, and I'll play it then. But what a just terrible game. You know what I've been playing lately? I played Tekken 8 instead. Tekken 8, excellent. Story mode, it was very good. Online mode is very good. Arcade modes are very good. Customization, I, you know, there's better customization in... Uh, some of the other games, but it's fine. It's it's good. It's good. I'm enjoying that game. I'd rather focus on that game and enjoy it. You should check out Tekken 8 if you're into that type of fighter thing. It loads fast. It plays fast. It's fun. It's fun to play with your friends. It's fun to play online. It's it's a good, uh, fun story mode, over-the-top bullshit. Everything that I wish Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League had been. Now, I will say, I do think some people have been overreactionary. I do think some people have been, like, too upset. Well, the way they killed Batman. Yeah, I, that was not a very great way to kill Batman, but it's a video game, man. It's okay. There were death threats. There were legitimate death threats uh, because of this silly video game. If you feel the need to issue death threats to people who made a silly video game, touch grass. Get out of the house. Do something different. You know, it's a video game at the end of the day. I get it. I love Spider-Man. And I wouldn't want to see Spider-Man unceremoniously murdered in a Marvel film. But if I did, I'd probably just walk away and stop giving them my money. And it's as simple as that. Find things you do like. Find people worthy of your time and money. And give them your time. Give them your attention. Give them your energy. There's too much negativity in this world already. Adding more negativity to it's never going to make it better. So... That's what I try to do. I try to just focus on the things I love. My girlfriend, my family, my friends, my dogs, my fans, my job. All things I love. And I love sharing that love with you. So, I'm going to go finish this coconut water. Uh, it's got strawberries floating in it. That does not look very appetizing on <laughs> camera, does it? I have the coloring sitting here. I look really red. This looks really brown. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nobody made it to the end of this video. Did you make it to the end of this video? If so, use the word nuts. In your comment section, tell me, do I seem nuts? Do you think the internet's nuts? Do you think you might be nuts? Let me know. I'm going to go finish my coconuts water and uh, spend the day with my girlfriend playing Pokemon Go, Mad at the Gathering, and enjoying my life. I'll live stream later too, probably, and I hope you have a wonderful day. As always, thanks for watching. I love you very much. I will speak with you again soon.